Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm here with Seth Gleason today, who's from Dartum Projects. Um, welcome, Seth. Thank you for coming along. Nice to meet you, Deborah. Thank you. Now, Seth is a fellow Brit from Kent, I understand. So we're just chatting about our uh, um, respective backgrounds. And you run Dartum Project, which is actually quite a reasonably sized business. Tell me what it is that they do, what you do. Yeah, it's Dartum Projects, um, Dartum. Uh, which is a little, uh, I suppose, different, different uh, bit of language. But uh, we uh, are a commercial interiors contractor. Yeah. Uh, predominantly, we do retail interiors, so uh, shop fitting. So, um, you know, we recently we filled out quite a few stores in Sylvia Park, the uh, Westfield Newmarket development, and uh, and Commercial Bank, and in the, the oh, bottom of the city as well. Nice. Okay, that was your work, was it? Uh, yeah, well, we yeah. did uh, about 12 drill retail stores in each each of those developments, which for one contract is quite a few. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, I'm guessing that last year was a bit of a tough year then for you with retail um, closing down with COVID and whatnot. How did it go last year? Yeah, last year was, was, a, was a tough year for us. Obviously, like any other business, COVID uh, hit us like a sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, but we were quite fortunate that we came out of lockdown and were straight into the, the fit out of Commercial Bay. So we managed to keep all our staff on board and actually um, we employed a couple more guys um, straight straight off the bat. So um, yeah, it hit us hit us financially, and it wasn't a, wasn't a great year for us last year. But we we managed to establish ourselves in the marketplace as a as a leader in, in what we do. Yeah. Uh, and and thanks to that, you know, the, the workload's looking really good for 2021. Oh, I'm really pleased to hear that. Thank you. Um, before we get started, I'd love to hear a bit of a professional and a personal best, so our listeners can get to know a little bit more about Seth behind the business. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I suppose my my personal best, son, I'm, I'm particularly proud of this uh, last five or six years I've, I've coached uh, young kids at, at rugby league at the high business coast raiders so i've taken them through from sort of uh, four five year olds through to what will be the under 11s this year and, oh, and wow. we've got quite a successful team so yeah proud of that um and, and i mentioned she just just um shortly ago before we came on that um i just caught my first yellow fin junior on my boat so um, <laughs> yeah. i'm pretty proud of that too so what size was it uh it was um 35 kilos oh, that's awesome. um okay. and uh great to see me um yeah and really good in the pan as well so oh, yeah. that <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant okay um professionally professionally um i suppose um we've had a lot of highlights along the way I just put some on linkedin actually about how um we've um we, we've been in three factories and, and started last year we, we went into a 2500 square meter um, facility uh, which is you know, it's, it's fantastic we it's, it's, we fitted it out to, to suit ourselves and um, yeah we've 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 really arrived in the marketplace now so I think um, the the culture we have in the in the business is probably what I'm most most proud of though you know I think it's taken a few years to build up but um, it's exactly where we want it to be and when did the company actually start how long has it been going for now she started in 2012 yep um, so it was our ninth birthday on the, on the 1st of February oh yeah so, happy yeah, birthday yeah, thank yeah. you very much yeah um, okay, so 2012, so it's been over a few years, yes. and um, you just made sort of alluded to the fact that it's you know taken a while to get the right people. Why, what, or the right culture, I should say? Tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, um, culture is something that you know, um, it's something you just got to keep working on. You know, that flight and effect they talk about, you know, you've, you've got to keep pushing it and pushing it, and yeah. um, it's about. Um, it's about having the right people in the in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, you know you've got to try and train people into your culture. But sometimes, if they're not the right fit for your culture, then then you have to um, move them on. Yeah, um, which is a bit callous, but but actually it works works in your favour. Um, I think it's best for both people. Right? There's no point in both the employer and the employee being unhappy. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've had it before where people have moved on and um, and they've actually come back and worked for us as a, an external contractor. And yeah, not I wouldn't say they thanks me, but um, you know, there's there's certainly no um, no malice there. You know, they're, they're they're enjoying enjoying what they're doing now. Sure, fantastic. Now we're talking about reducing stress and overwhelm today. And when I chatted to you before you came on the podcast, we we're talking about the fact that for you, that's been about having the right people in the right seats. Do you want to explain a little bit more what you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to sound like I just like to sack people all the time. Don't I? But, um, <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, I, you know, for, for me, um, being able to, to relax as, as a business owner is, is about being able to rely on yourself. Yeah. Um, it's about having competent people in the right position. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough, we've had a GM on board now for the last couple of years. Um, and that's really given me a chance to, to focus on the sales side of the business, um, which means that I'm not quite as hands-on as I used to be. Yeah. Um, and Are the staff grateful for that? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I think, I think um, half of them sort of 
miss my input, and yeah. half of them probably don't miss my input. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, it's it's certainly freed me up to, uh, to to look at the things that, as a business owner, you don't always get a chance to. You know, the sales, the uh, the, the, the culture we've talked about. You know, um, so yeah, going back to your question, I think having people in the right places, confident people who you who you trust, trust. who yeah. you rely on, and uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that we we've, we've got that. In space in our business. And so what does that mean for you personally? If you've got the right team around you, what does that mean as a, as a business owner? Um, well, to put it into perspective, in, in two weeks' time, I'm, I'm away on a fishing trip for, for a week. Yeah. Um, and if you asked me three years ago if I was going to do that, I, I probably may have done, but I probably would have spent more time on the phone looking at my emails than I would have done fishing. Right. Um, so, so this time we're actually going off to tuna, right? Yeah, we're actually going to mile in that tuna. Okay, so right, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, it gives me a chance to be able to not have to worry when my back's turned. Sure. Um, and I've always had competent people in place, but when you've actually got that senior management team in place, they're looking after your job. As, as, as well as their own, if, if you like. And I think as the business grows up, I mean, with a lot of clients where they start the business and where the business started and where it finished up is often quite different. So therefore, the people you take on that journey with you, they do have to change over time if they're not quite the right fit for the new business. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, and, and even some of the people who um, who are still in the business have to go through a transition with you. Uh, and quite often, it's quite reluctant. You know, you, you add in new layers of, uh, of management in, into your team. And it can be, you know, for, for people who've been um, in touch with with um, the strategy and, and, and the decision making to all of a sudden have a, another level of management above them is it's not always the easiest thing as well. So, Challenging. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how do you deal with that? What do you do to sort of facilitate that transition? Um, very good question. I, um, I, I think I, I probably dealt with it organically and didn't didn't really plan my way through it. Maybe if I, I turn back the clock, I, I may have done it differently. But um, I think the, the, the big thing initially is to, to, to really back the um, the team, the management team have come in. Yeah. Because if you try and circumvent them, then then you're, you're really undermining them. So, mum and dad thing, right? So you go to mum, mum says no, and you go to dad and say, <laughs> very <laughs> much so. yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So well, I'm not sure if I was mum or dad, but uh, <laughs> well, I had to support my partner in, in, in that instance. So uh, yeah, so that's something that I was I was quite keen to do. Um, so I probably didn't do well enough was um, to to make sure I was communicating to to those people that they were still a very very important part of the business, which which they. They, they were and they still are. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, the transition doesn't take that long and, um, and and the business is better off for it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, to go from, I mean, how many you had what, yourself just in the beginning back in 2012 or was there a couple of you in the business? What was it looking like in 2012? Uh, well, 2012, it was uh, myself in a, in a small room up in Oliver. So, uh, it was your own, yeah. Yeah, yeah with, a, with a computer and, and uh, my wife uh, came in and, and, and did the accounts for me on, on uh, zero. So, uh, yeah, me for, for about... Six months. Yeah. Um, we were quite lucky. There was a, um, a shopping centre development, a small one that opened up in, in Silverdale, which is just happens to be where I live. Yeah. Uh, we picked up a what was called telecom store then, which is now Spark, obviously. Yes, yeah. um, the, the North Beach store there and a, and a couple of others. And um, from then, just got on a roll and um, yeah, have a look back. So, has it all been plain sailing? No, I don't, I don't think it's been um, plain sailing, but it's been enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I, I've loved Nearly every minute of it, I would say every minute of it. It's been yeah. some, some personal challenges. Um, but, yeah, it's it's not been plain sailing, but it, it's been um, it's been fun. And, um, yeah, I, um, I think if you go into it with the right attitude, yep. don't have too high expectations, and and um, check yourself, you know, make, make sure that you, you understand um, or, or try and take other people's views yep. on board. Um, then, then it's yeah, it's it's a great last. <laughs> so, how do you get to keep people involved in that? Because obviously, as the owner, we often have quite a strong vision for the business where it's headed. Um, and you're obviously a thought leader in your space as well. But how do you make sure your team are kept on board with what you're doing? Um, you probably gather from this podcast that I'm a talker. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, good, yeah. Yeah, so I, I like to like to keep people informed. Um, I, I like to. Um, we have a quarterly newsletter within our uh, within our, our business. Oh, yeah. We we post out to everybody. Very old fashioned postal um, 
things. So, it works still. People like underestimate the power yeah. of offline. Yeah, yeah. so um, I try and uh, firstly thank people for what they do. We, we get a health and safety message out to them. We, we have our MVPs where they you know, they get a meat pack for, um, for being awesome. Oh, yeah. um, we introduce new staff and that. And um, you try and talk a little bit about the, the strategy and what we're planning to do. Yeah. Uh, I just try to talk to people on a day-to-day basis. But, you know, as the company gets bigger, it's harder to, to get around the sites. And, you know, I walked around our factory this morning for the first time in, in two weeks. You know, it's the only other side of the wall from my office. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's I mean, you know, probably need to practice what I preach, but it's getting out and, and talking to people as much as you can. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. What's been the biggest challenge in that time? So we've been going for, what, how many years is that? Is that nine years? Nine years, yeah. Yeah, that's right, your yeah. birthday on the 1st of February. Yeah, congratulations, yeah. yeah. Um, so nine years. So, yeah, what, what's been the biggest challenge in that time, do you think? Um... Yeah, probably I had a really good friend who worked for me um, and he went his his own way and um, um, it was actually quite hard for me to, to take on board, um, probably because I sort of felt like I was losing a mate more than losing an employee. Um, and I sort of learned a little bit, a bit of a lesson from that is that, um, you know, now everybody who comes on board with the company comes on board for their merits, not... not um, because of who they are. Yeah. Uh, he was actually a very competent person, but you know, his life was taking a different um, different road and um, took me a little while to reconcile that, which was more on me than it was him. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a challenge. You know, I, I took that quite personally. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, um, the challenge is if something ever goes wrong, yeah. I still take it personally. You know, I want to um, – we, we have some – some values in our company and all around our delivery and, and our approachability. Yeah. And, and I, I get quite upset if we, we fail to achieve, you know, which doesn't happen very often, I have to say, yeah. as for those listening. Um, <laughs> but, but when it does, you know, so I, I take it personally. And so what do you do? How do you make sure those values are kind of instilled throughout the organisation and then what do you do? Because sometimes we're human, right? We make errors. We don't mean to, but we do. Yeah. How do you recover from that? And- um, well, you just keep making sure that people understand what our values are um, and um, I, I live by the values um, and so I sort of ex- I set those expectations and I, and I pull people up on them. Yeah. yeah. What happens if somebody, you know, who, because in an interview they can appear to be the right person and then they come on board and they actually start working with you, you said a completely different side to them. How do you try and make sure there is a values match from the beginning? Good question. Um, and to be honest, I wasn't very good at that. I was very much a here's a hole. There's a there's a hole shaped person. I'm going to put that person in the hole <laughs> um, because I just felt like it was the way to fix it. You know, yeah. I needed, needed a bum on the seat. Yes. Um, and as she got taught um, probably by our previous financial controller, she she would go through a quite a rigorous um, um, process of, of interview. Yeah. Uh, and she wouldn't accept people unless she felt they were right. Yeah. Um, so you know it. Um, it, it's a case of making sure that, that I like the person yeah. because I don't like people who don't have similar values to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah, know, no, you, you have to share, share the same, same values. They don't share together. the values. They're, yeah. not, you know, they're not really my type of person. Um, I quite often bring my wife into um, to interviews. She, she does some HR for the business, so yep. um, I bring her in and she'll She'll second opinion, make yeah, sure that she'll yeah, go. I'm, yeah. I'm a gut instinct person. She'll she'll just um, make sure I go through it. I'm reading a really great book called Essentialism at the moment, Greg, Greg McKeon, I think it's called. Yes, I, I started to read it, I haven't finished it. Uh, so I'm in a book club, so I'm forced to read it five chapters every week, so it's not the tenth chapter. And it's Excellent. really interesting because it talks about um, when people are employing people, it's actually about thinking not only are they the right person for the. It's, it's kind of the question is can you see yourself working with them? So yes. if you can't see yourself working with them, they're probably not the right fit yeah. yeah and that's the way that we sort of tend to look at things and go right okay is this person going to fit in can I work with them when they work with us yes yeah. Yeah, okay yeah. so we're talking, talking about reducing stress and overwhelm you're talking about definitely in the right people what have been the biggest challenges in the people arena for you have you ever had apart from your your friend who obviously had other ideas has there been any challenges from people who didn't fit into the organization or weren't quite right for it I won't go into too many specific no, details. No, not at all. But, no, but um, just a high I've, level. Um, I've, I've exited people um, very knee-jerk in the past. Right. And finances has come back and, and uh, bitter me. Um, Welcome to New Zealand Laws. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's pretty really crony at times. Yeah. Um, but I don't regret one of them. You know, those people needed to go at that time. They needed to go. Yeah. Um, and I think that actually helped our culture. People understood that, you know, if – you're not on the bus. You're not yeah. welcome in. Yeah. Um, 
and once again, I'm sorry, this is I'm probably sounding like I'm, I'm a bit of a heart or something, not, um, but but you know, I, I want to protect our culture at, at all costs. And I think you have to protect yeah, culture, yeah, costs, yeah. You know, if it costs five or six grand to exit someone, yeah, um, it's, it's cheaper than having them in, in the, uh, the company for, for another six months, so. Tony Focus, I was on a couple of weeks ago, did exactly the same thing. It's like, has the conversation? Are you really happy here? And if I even hesitate, you know, is it not the right person? And then it's time to kind of get them out. And it's not, I say, it does work for both the employer and the employee because they'll go on and find something better as well. Yes, yeah. they yeah. Okay, so we always ask for three tips from our, um, our guests around what would they tell other, not tell, how, what would they suggest other people could do within their business that would actually help them? So have you got three tips for me? Yeah, my first one um, is really around stress, but I, I, I believe that it's, um, it's it's one that um, people don't understand uh, or realise as much, and, and that's find the right bank manager and, and the right bank for you and your business. Uh, a lot of people that you know they, they start off business with with just a, a retail business bank, yeah, uh, and, and stick with them for for a long time. And as your business grows, um, you need to be with the right tier of, of business bank for you. Yeah, you need to be happy with the service, and then. Um, I know that um, the, you know there's the, the, the much for much at times, but but I think making sure that you exit your, your business bank if they're, if they're not working for you right is yeah. probably my, my first one. And and in some ways that is linked to stress because man, money is a massive issue in terms of if you haven't got cash flow and you haven't got somebody supportive of the growth of your business, yes. then it does create quite a bit of stress, I should imagine. So yes. get the right person in the bank, somebody who understands what you're doing, somebody who knows what you're trying to achieve and will actually back you, just but, much like you do your stuff. Very much so, yeah. yeah. And, and that is, you know, someone who's on the same page as you yeah. um, and, you know, you know will will – Go to their superiors in the bank with with the right story and yeah. and, and fight, your know, fight, fight your battles for it. Yeah. And you can tell. <laughs> number two, what would number two be? Number two, um, a, a really good friend of mine um, said to me once um, the saying, which is the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Yeah. Um, and that really resonates with me. It's, it's don't suffer fools. Yep. Don't let. Um, don't just don't avoid conflict. You know, if, if you see something wrong, don't just think, "Oh, I'll deal with that next time," because um, I just can't be bothered with it. Yeah. You really need to, to front foot it, and um, and 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 sometimes, like like you say, actually, it's appreciated. Yeah. People then know exactly where your standards are, what what um, what you expect of them. I talk about boundaries. I always give the example of, you know, imagine a little seedling in the middle of a paddock full of cows. What happens to that seedling? Yes. It gets trampled, it gets eaten. Yes. You've got a boundary around it being a fence. It allows that seedling to grow and, and flourish and thrive. And then next thing you know, it's a big tree. It doesn't need it anymore. But if you don't put the boundaries around, it never never gets there. Well, it's very much like kids, isn't it? You yeah. know, if you don't set those boundaries, they're yes. not going to grow up to be what you what you would like them to be. And I actually think being a business owner is much like being a good parent. <laughs> you, know, you, need to, you need a simple set of rules. You need to follow those rules. Um, and you need to keep repeating them over and over again, make sure you stick to them. Okay, last one for the listeners. Yeah, um, well, I mean, we alluded to it in, um, in, in, I suppose, the subject here, but it is to be able to switch off after work. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite lucky. I've, you know, I've got a mother and wife and uh, three kids who are keeping me busy. Um, yeah. I love to go fishing with my friend. Um, I, I like a, a beer or two every now and then. And I think um, I've, I've seen people before who who they they don't, Put work down. You yeah. know they um, they don't um, they see it as their the, the, their own entity. Uh, for me, you know, it, 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 even though it's my business, it is still a job, um, and I've got other jobs. Yeah, you know, you've got other passions friends, right outside yeah. of, of work. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And I think it gives you uh, a chance to, to, to refresh yeah. and to uh, to get back into it on a on a Monday morning whenever you want to and, and, um, and really hit it um, with a fresh set of eyes again. Yeah, so, I think um, you're right. I mean, if you've got completely engrossed in it all the time, you know, that, that clarity of thought that you get from just taking a step away from it. That's so, right, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so finally, um, if people would like to talk to you more about what you do and what, how can they get in contact with you? Where do they find you? Uh, well, um, Data and Projects, we've, we've got our own website, dataandprojects.co.nz. Yeah. Um, to say, we, we, uh, we manufacture commercial joinery, we uh, fit our office spaces, yeah. fit our uh, retail stores, uh, and, and, and general construction as well. Um, but uh, if they need to get hold of me personally, it's um, Seth at datingprojects.co.nz. Oh, that's fantastic. Hey, look, thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. Um, good luck with the rest of the year. That's fantastic. Thank Been a pleasure. Thanks. 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 Bye.